Hey, hey, what's up, guys? It's Jordan with the Laundromat Resource Podcast Show 59, and I am pumped that you are here today because today we're talking with Alex Joukowsky, who is from the venture-backed company called Sense. And if you haven't heard of Sense yet, you will hear about them, obviously, because you're listening to this podcast. But also, they're doing some interesting things in our business. And in fact, we talk a lot about what the future of this industry is and how they intend to play a role in the future of this industry. So very, very intriguing, very interesting. And not only that, but it's packed full of awesome, awesome insights and advice and tips for laundromat owners. What I loved about this is that since is a venture backed a company, which means that investors have invested in this company, betting it's going to be a success. And, you know, one of the questions I ask is, well, what is it that these investors see in our industry that make them think that this business is a good one to invest in? So that was a very intriguing question um, and a very intriguing answer. And it kind of shed some light on how some of the people who have money are thinking about our business and what kind of outlook they have towards it. So it's very interesting, but there's a ton of pack, a ton of ton of information packed into this episode for you and you are going to love it. And not only that, but Alex is really, really fun to talk to, really uh, good communicator. So you're going to love, love, love this episode, everything about it. Um, real quick, I want to say welcome to all the new members at laundromatresource.com. Uh, I've we're, I think we're close to 3000 members now. So, and a lot of you guys still have not really launched the paid membership, but a lot of you guys have found it. I have no idea. You guys are a little sleuths, uh, looking forward over there, but there is going to be, this is not a launching of it, by the way, you can find it if you look for it, but uh, there is going to be some really cool stuff coming up for pro members here in a little bit. I've been working a little bit behind the scenes um, to, to get some of that stuff going. But welcome to all of you new members uh, of laundromatresource.com. I love the community that we're having. Make sure you go to the forums, laundromatresource.com slash forums. Introduce yourself on the new members forums. And the coolest thing by far happening on the entire website, in my opinion, is on the new members forums where people are connecting with each other, you know, geographically. Uh, if you're if you're close by to people, people are you know introducing themselves, letting you know where on the laundromat journey they are and where in the world they are, and people are connecting that way. Super cool. Um, and we've talked about it all the time, but when we're connecting with people who have similar goals as us, it just helps us all achieve those goals a lot quicker. So make sure you're connecting over there and then check out the other forums too while you're at it. Um, we have one laundromat specific questions. We have commercial real estate. There's a financing forum and there's another one. And I can't remember off the top of my head what it is, but go jump in, uh, have a discussion every single week, ask a question, answer a question. I haven't brainwashed you guys enough lately. So go to the forums, laundromatresource.com slash forums and ask a question, answer a question over there. And, uh, and dude, let's all, let's all jump on there and uh, be communicating, connecting with one another, helping each other out, helping each other find success quicker. Cool. So you can find that link, all the links from this episode, you can find at laundromatresource.com slash show 59, show 59. So check that out and check out all the links to everything. And there are a lot of links to some very interesting things uh, in this episode. One of which that we're going to bring up is a brand new link, a brand new page on the website. It's the events page. Now, uh, we are starting to put together some events right now, some virtual. I'd like to do some in-person ones. I'm still in California and, you know, everything's, everything's just, uh, I don't know. We, can, we can't do anything yet. Uh, I mean, we could do more than we could do. But anyways, I'd like to start getting some in-person events. And I do want to direct you to one in-person event. And I'll put a link to this in the description if you're on YouTube or in the show notes. Uh, but there's a meetup happening in Scottsdale coming up um, in, uh, I think, 
June 25th, somewhere around there. I'll put the date and the link in the description. So if you're in or near Scottsdale or want to go check that one out, um, make sure you check that. I'll put it on the events page, laundromatresource.com slash events. Uh, but also we're going to talk about a webinar here in this episode that's coming out. So that'll be up there. And there's some other webinars coming up um, also. So those will all be on the events page. And I'll be adding to that as we get more and more events happening um, that, you know, I, I'm just, I'm super excited about these events because my goal is to help you succeed in the industry. So I'm starting to pull together people who can do just that, help you succeed in this industry. And they're willing to come talk to you about what it takes to succeed. And, um, and some of them even have some, some tools and resources that will help you succeed. So look at that, uh, the, that events page, join us in some of these events. And uh, Alex is going to be teaching a webinar here. Uh, pretty soon you'll hear about that. And uh, it's going to be awesome. I think you're going to love it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Man, let's, uh, that's enough, man. Let's jump into it with Alex right after this. All right, guys, today's episode is brought to you by Atmosphere TV. You may remember back in episode 34 when Atmosphere TV's Mike Kelly joined me on the podcast. It was an epic, epic episode. If you haven't listened to it, show 34, laundromatresource.com slash show 34. Go check it out. It's incredible. A ton of value there. One of the things we talked about is just the importance of creating a good positive atmosphere in your laundromat. And I was just rereading the book by Simon Sinek, Start With Why. And one of the things that really stands out to me is that people don't make purchase decisions based on, you know, the logic of, you know, any decision that they're making to spend their money. It's more based on a feeling and an association. And so it's really important to, uh, create a positive feeling, a positive atmosphere, no pun intended, uh, in your laundromat to help people associate this chore that most people don't like doing with something positive. Atmosphere TV is an incredible way to help improve the atmosphere of your laundromat. And basically, if you haven't heard of it, what it is, is it has 50 plus channels uh, created specifically for businesses with everything from uh, sports clips, hilarious fail videos, draw dropping videos from all over the world. There's automobile channels. Uh, there's a ton of stuff. My kids love, love, love it. And my customers love it. Atmosphere TV could be a great way to either supplement your cable or a lot of us laundromat owners are cutting our cable bill completely and running Atmosphere TV. They're designed to be used with no audio, but they also do have an audio option. That way you can kind of design the atmosphere of your laundromat the way that you want it. So get rid of cable, get rid of those news channels that are bringing negativity into your laundromat and fill your laundromat with positive videos that bring positive vibes to your customers with Atmosphere TV. And if you use the code word, the keyword, the uh, promo code, I don't know, resource, promo code resource, then they're going to waive your setup fee. And now everything is going to be free. There's no monthly fee for it. You can use it for free in your laundromat and it's going to bring a positive vibe to your uh, atmosphere. So check out atmosphere.tv. I'll put a link down in the description on YouTube or in the show notes. Check it out there. Make sure you use the keyword resource. That way you can get that thing for free. And Or if you'd like, email Mike at mike.kelly at atmosphere.tv. Okay. Again, this is Alex Joukowsky, the founder of Sense, the venture back company who in his own words, he says, we built Sense to back the operator. He'll say that in this interview. I loved that. And uh, here we go. Let's get into it with Alex. Alex, man, thank you for joining me on the show. I'm super pumped that you're here. How are you doing, man? Doing well, man. Thanks so much for having me. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to get into this. Oh, dude, it's my pleasure. And we've talked a couple of times already and every single time, you know, there's been, it's, it's just been energetic and a lot of fun. So I know this is going to be a lot of energy and a lot of fun. And you have a lot of really, really great stuff to add today. We've talked about a little bit of, of it offline. Um, and I, you know, I think everybody's going to get a lot of value for it from it. But before we do, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and the path that you've, you've been on this very unique path to get into the laundromat industry. So tell us who you are and then maybe take us along the path a little bit to the laundromat industry. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, I, again, thanks so much for having me on. I'm super excited to, 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 you know, get to know you. It's been just so awesome to, to pick your brain and hear your experience in the industry. And that's really what it's been about for me um, and our entire business is to get as deep into this industry and as deep into to, to being a sponge as we can to understand what, what it's like to be operators and, um, and, and, and really be knowledgeable in the space because you know, I didn't come from laundry necessarily. I didn't have my, my parents didn't open a laundromat. I didn't have you know, family members that did it. I, I, I started more in institutional technology. I, I built a company about five years ago in the higher education space, um, running uh, got a payments white labeled marketplace platform that facilitated kind of daily student life transactions, meal plans, membership dues, peer to peer payments. Um, and there was at you know, one point where I was going from the National Association of Student Affairs Professionals Conference to the Coin Laundry Association, Golden Gate Chapter Gala. And I thought, man, I am doing this right. I am the sexiest <laughs> of industries, uh, but no, I, you know, I, I got into the space because I had just heard, yeah, I think it was through friends and friends of friends that laundromats were great investments. And I had an apartment in San Francisco that I paid an arm and a leg for, and it still took me 65 quarters to do my laundry. I always wanted to get, you know, just did my wash and fold. Um, and so I, I had kind of a peripheral experience and understanding of the business, but it wasn't until after I sold my last company to one of the largest players in, in the higher ed landscape that I looked more and more into the business as an investor. I, I wanted to, you know, roll up my sleeves, get my hands dirty, really run an SMB business, buy a couple stores, maybe more, scale it up. Um, but obviously before I wanted to get into that and, and uh, I needed to understand what it, what it really mean. Mm-hmm. Um, so from there, I joined the CLA. Uh, I went to an event where, you know, Brian Wallace spoke and got to connect with a lot of operators in the Bay Area. And the more I spoke with operators, the more excited I got about the industry and about the business, but the more disturbed and maybe disturbed is the wrong word, but the more disturbed I, I, I was in terms of the technology that's out there supporting them. And, and again, I came from an industry that was very bureaucratic, very large, but technology didn't, you know, was 10 year, was a 10 year lag behind mm-hmm. anything else. I was very familiar with that experience. Um, and the other folks on our team have come from building the largest company in, uh, in a largest accounting and business management system in the home services, interior design, home remodeling, building space. And so, you know, working with a lot of SMBs in, in different industries. So we, we all came from different industries, um, all institutional software businesses that we've all exited for, for tens of millions. Um, and, and we've processed billions of dollars through our various companies. But I think one of our superpowers is, is we didn't really start in the industry. Uh, we just became obsessed in, with it and a little psychopath on how much we're obsessed with it over the last, you know, three or four years as we've gotten deeper and deeper into the business. So that's kind of the the story of it. I'm still on the hunt of, of buying my my first stores and I just moved to New York. So I'm always looking at stores that I can buy personally and different team members are are, are trying to buy. So um, yeah, yeah, man, we just, we love this business. We love this industry and love the folks that are in it. Well, you know, we're, we're an industry full of psychopaths, so you're in good company. Uh, but out of curiosity, I mean, what, what intrigued you guys so much, or maybe you specifically so much about this industry that, you know, you did become, obs- it's, I mean, it, listen, man, I'm just going to shoot straight with you. It's a little weird that somebody gets obsessed with laundromats, right? Like, so, you know, what, what drove you to that? Yeah, I think, you know, naturally I I do gravitate towards these kind of unsexy businesses and unsexy industries, but it's frankly, it's usually the ones that are, that have the most opportunity, right. And are operating at the the, the least efficient and have so much room to grow, right. This industry has been very, very stable. It's one of the most attractive parts of it. It's, you know, the pandemic has been brutal for a lot of SMBs, a lot of business owners, but it's been really incredible to see how a lot of our operators are not just surviving, but in some cases thriving, opening new stores, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, during the pandemic. So something attractive to me is I, I see laundry and, and laundromats as one of the, probably the last retailers standing as things move, uh, you know, as more ghost kitchens pop up, as things move online, it's just a, you know, and, and this paints it in a negative light, but I kind of call a laundromat like the cockroach of Main Street. You can't kill it. It's just <laughs> always going to be there. It's such a staple of society and it and, and, and a cornerstone of, of a community. So I think those businesses, when I look at it with my with my tech and investor hat on, show the most 
you know, the, the most promising opportunity of growth. And the fact that when you look at technology really in this space in laundry, when I was assessing the companies that are, that are providing services in, in the industry, it was always the Uber for laundry. It was never really focused on the owner operator and focusing on backing and empowering the operator. Um, it was always trying to do things outside and, and catch the consumer trends of people wanting to outsource laundry. Um, and, and I think that that is what is so compelling, what was so c- compelling getting into the business, but having the chance to work now with, with hundreds of operators and hear how they got into the business, what they're struggling with and what they're succeeding at. It's like, it, it's like we wake up with fresh eyes every day and, and get this new, uh, excitement because there is just so much opportunity. I think that that's the driving factor of our of what makes us all obsessive psychopaths in, in the business, because there's just, there's so much that can be done. There's so much that can be optimized. Um, and, and, but there's also so much to, to love about the industry today. Um, so it feels like just uh, open fields, um, uh, you know, ahead. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I love that. And I think you're right. And it, it is like a unique combination of a stable business with big upside potential, uh, right now, because we're starting to see, you know, I, I like that you mentioned, you know, the the higher education kind of technology stuff was, you know, 10 years behind. I don't know if we even qualify in the 10 years behind technologically, but we're catching up and things are changing really fast right now. Um, and uh, I, I mean, I think we have a long way to go, but I, but, you know, the amount of change I've seen in the last even like three to five years has been like way more than probably the last couple of decades beforehand. And I think it's only going to continue to go fast. And I've been saying over the last few episodes here, like, Hey, laundromat owners, keep your eyes open. Stuff's changing. If you don't change, you're going to be, you're going to end up a zombie mat owner down the line here because the, the industry is, is moving and we can't just, you know, that stability is still there, but stability doesn't mean keep everything the same forever anymore like yeah. it used to. Yeah. And I think the beauty of it now, I mean, the, the timing is great, right? It's, it's never been a better time, I think, to be kind of a laundromat owner, an SMB owner, because let's look at the other industries, right? And I, this is something I tell operators all the time when we get on the phone with them and talk about their business and say, look what pizza shops are doing. Look at what barber shops are doing, gyms, hotels, you know, small accounting firms. There are we got beauty salons. This is kind of the renaissance in, 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 you know, tech, we call it vertical SaaS, right? Hyper verticalized businesses where you're focused on deadly focused on one industry and you're building software as a service. So it's kind of one platform that can be dynamic for different business owners, depending on how they operate their business. But there are companies like Squire, which is serving thousands and thousands of barbershops raised, you know, 80 plus million dollars and slice powering. All they do is power local pizza shops, right? Their tagline is order pizza online and support your local pizzeria companies like Boulevard and mind body. And, 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 you know, these businesses that are hyper verticalized, focusing on industries that have been, really hit with just really generic software and really generic systems or really outdated systems from the players that were leading for 30 years. Um, and, and, and so I tell all of our operators, like, check these companies out. Look at what's happening up, up in other verticals. And that's what gets us so excited. It's what's enabled us to raise, you know, close $10 million and have the, the, the most top tier VCs and investors um, behind what we're doing because, I think this is one of the last uh, companies that uh, one of the last industries, excuse me, that that hasn't been addressed um, and hasn't been focused on. And this is the timing is is just so great because there are playbooks um, that other small business owners have been able to utilize when when being able to leverage impactful software. Um, so I, I think it's not just a technology revolution where there should be friction, right? This is something that there's a wave of, of possibility and operators can take advantage of it in a very basic way, right? Just digitizing, very, you know, very small things about your business, reaching customers in a different way without creating process for the sake of creating process. Like there are small ways that you can get into this, 
next gen store ownership. You don't have to have robots and machine learning and take crypto and do all, you know, you don't have to be on the forefront of everything. There are small things that you can start to do for your business um, at low cost and high impact. And that's really what the value of modern technology should be. Should be dynamic, should be simple to use because frankly, the, the, the most difficult software to build is the one that's robust and simple at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you can't really just tease us like that with, Hey, there are simple things that, you know, you can start with. And, and I, I was kind of talking about this in a previous uh, episode of the podcast um, where, you know, we were talking about uh, data analysis and, you know, that can be very overwhelming for a lot of laundromat owners, right? We're not, typically data analysts that, you know, are, it's not like a natural bridge. Right. And so even just the terminology, you know, that data analysts use can be overwhelming, but you know, one of the points I was making is you can start simple, you can do simple things and get more sophisticated as you start to grasp the simple stuff and you don't have to be sophisticated all at once. Right. And even, you know, a simple model, will help you improve your business and you can make the model more robust and more sophisticated as you go, but you don't need a sophisticated one, you know, right off, right off the bat. So, so, okay. So you mentioned some of these simple things. I mean, do you have any examples of, you know, to throw out there for us? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and just to your, your point earlier, I mean, there are <clears throat> definitely tech phrases that are scary making data driven decisions feels like some corporate-y heavy thing that I have to have a, you know, I need to have a data scientist. I need to have somebody, a tech person to understand. Making data-driven decisions, just looking at what's happening in your business and actually being able to see it and then know what's good and what's bad. Or like, you know, we have a lot more customers that come in when the price is this compared to when the price is that. Well, then we can make a data-driven decision over either price or the service, you know, things like that. But I'd say for the way that we think about little ways of, of, of impacting a better customer experience, better store ownership um, is, you know, you know, through technologies, you know, small things like instead of sticky notes and paper logs and paper tags and writing on the tickets and, you know, taping them in front of the machine, but digitizing order flow, right? The, the management of orders. And I used to talk to operators who said, hey, the people in my store, my attendants, my team members, they get it, you know? They've just been doing the same thing for years and years. And, and, and I just trust that they'll get it done. And to a certain extent, I, I think there is truth to that for sure. Right. When you trust your employees and they be, and, and they build habits, then you can trust that they'll get the job done. But what we try to impart to operators is you can take your high performing employees, but realizing that this industry experiences a lot of employee churn. And so you can't always guarantee that the employees that understand your process today are going to be there tomorrow. Um, but also, how do we make it so you don't have to be managing them so, so directly that we limit the amount of opportunities for failure, the opportunities for mistakes that they could have? Just knowing what order went into what machine by which employee at what time, right? Now, that seems like a process, but you know, with sense and, and really what, what really should be with just solid modern technology, it should just be two clicks of, of buttons to be able to track that level of granularity. Now, some operators say, I don't need all that data. You know, the, the machine just runs and it just happens and it's okay. And, and to a certain extent, I, I also understand that. Let's, let's not build process for the sake of building process, but, but good technology should fit all the operating models. You want to get as granular into the ROI on your labor and the pounds per hour your employee employees fold and certain utilization of machines based on the volume capacity of a, of a washing machine based on the wash and fold pound, you know, the pound of the wash and fold order to make sure that your 80 pound order isn't being stuffed into a 60 pound machine. You know, if you want to get that granular, good software should help you do that. If you just want to know that an order was handled by an employee, it was processed and it was given back to a customer and to know generally the weight differential and make sure nothing was lost, the, you should be able to have access to basic systems that are more scalable um, and, and provide a better opportunity of transparency and customer service and, and, and you know, through that technology. And, and the last thing I'll say is, you know, my job 
is to sell software to business owners to make their lives better. But truthfully, the laundromat owner operator, you know, in some cases they are our end user, but by and large, it's the in-store attendant. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of technology, and I felt this way in my last business in, in higher ed, you build who you sell to, right? When you sell to the CIOs, you sell expensive software, you need to build product for them. But the students were the one using the platforms, right? Uh, in, in many cases, they were the ones making the payments. And in our case, right, we, we sell the software to the business owner, they're the decision maker, but the in-store attendants are using the system every single day. The customers are dropping in the orders and, and experiencing our product every single day. And so that's really who we try to focus on when we think about building technology. It's not just what is it, how does the owner operator think? It's what actually makes the lives of the employees better? What makes what makes it easier for them to do their job? How can we actually make them happier when they do their job and make it less possible or make it, I'll say less of a requirement for them to make decisions, right? It's why Mark Zuckerberg and all these tech guys wear just gray shirts because they're trying to eliminate the amount of decisions they need to make in their day when they know what they're going to wear before they wake up. And so how can we eliminate the required decisions um, of an employee, which then you know, will of course limit the amount of mistakes that they'll make. And when they're succeeding at their job, they're going to be happier. The retention is going to be there to be higher performing. So I think that's a, a, a nuance that a lot of tech companies and, and just people in general, they don't think about who is the actual person using the product. And while I need to sell this thing, I want people using and, and buying and distributing this amongst all the stores in the country. But we really got to think about the attendant and of course the customer experience because the attendants are our best retention tools. We, we've never lost a customer, we've never lost an operator because the attendants love our system. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, one of the things that you said that I thought was really, really good is um, that the, the end user really is your attendant, right? And I think a lot of owners you know, are a little hesitant to get into technology because number one, they're just not familiar with it, especially if they've been in the industry for a while and it makes it feel like it's, it complicates things, right? They just kind of know how the business works and it complicates things. And I think maybe one of the things that can be easily missed is that, yes, if you implement a technology, there's probably going to be a little bit of a learning curve. You're going to have to put a little effort into learning the system. Your attendants will probably have to put a little bit of effort into learning the system and developing the habits to utilize it. Um, but ultimately, the point of having a technology is not to complicate life for anyone, right? It's to simplify life and to eliminate decisions, yes, but also mistakes to make things more efficient, to be more cost effective, you know, and, and ultimately to help you make better decisions across the board, not just for your business and your, your bottom line, but also for your employees and also for your customers um, and clients, you know, when you're doing pickup and delivery and all that. So, um, I, I mean, I think that gets overlooked a little bit is that technology can feel a little bit overwhelming, especially when it's brand new and there's a learning curve, but it is really there to simplify life, not make things more complicated. And that goes double for attendance who I've seen can be the most resistant sometimes to utilizing technology because again, they have to put a little more effort into learning the system, but being able to communicate, Hey, this is, this is going to make your life easier. This is going to make your job easier. Once we kind of get over the learning hump, is that, yeah. is that accurate? Uh, yeah, I, I think you're totally right. I mean, look, there, there's there's a couple sides to this, right? It's there are best way to phrase this. There are entrepreneurial, uh, uh, you know, team members, attendants that like to build their own businesses inside of stores. So maybe they'll pocket that five or ten or twenty dollars for that wash and fold order, or start a machine with their cash card after a customer, you know, slips them five bucks, and that is a creative entrepreneurial entrepreneurial spirit, which in the right setting is great. Um, and so, so there's of course a little resistance on that front because maybe you're an employee was able to make more money, uh, without that kind of, uh, visibility. Um, but I will say, I think it's also in any new technology, whether you're setting up your, you know, your cable box or you just bought an iPhone or anything like that, 
I mean, and I feel this today. I, I run a software company and when you get new technology, it can feel scary, can feel, you know, isolating when you're using something that you, you either haven't been trained on or you've gotten some generic information and you just kind of have to learn how to do it. Um, so, you know, we've hired many people on our team specifically focused on working with in-store attendants. But beyond that, one of the programs that, that, that we've run that's probably been one of my favorites is actually using the attendance of the stores that we work with who make money by training other attendants, mm-hmm. right? Because when the people that are best utilized to, to use the system and could show people that this actually makes a difference in my day to, difference in my day to day. When we did our press release of our, of our seed round, um, which was, which was led by Bessemer and, you know, folks that started seamless Grubhub and, you know, really incredible, incredible angels and investors on, on the company. One of the quotes we used in, in, in that press release was from an attendant of one of our stores, because like we, we really focus on working closely with the attendants. We'd have weekly calls with attendants at various stores that we'd work with because, you know, they provide us such incredible insight on how to build better software, but they are champions of our product. And so I think there are, are many sides. Some are resistant to change because they're, they're, it's scary. It's something new that they have to learn. Maybe they had a nice side business that something like this would eliminate, which of course the operator wants to eliminate. But um, we also think of it as, look, through, through dynamic, better digitized software, Owner operators can think of new models of compensating employees, commission-based employees, because you know laundry inherently, you know, it's it's low skill labor, minimum wage kind of kind of kind of kind of labor, but high performing employees are game changers in your business. They can convert that self serve cu- customer to the wash and fold. They can fold more clothes per hour than a robot can. Right. And, and, and you can get such a return on that labor and you can find ways to incentivize your quality labor for them to be entrepreneurial by working harder in a system that makes their job easier. Right. Mm-hmm. So you know, labor can be a difficult thing in this business, especially in the pandemic. And um, but, you know, that that is the power of good software and, and, and their integrations that sense has made with other companies that allow for. An example, a good friend of mine that, that runs a company that provides same day payment for hourly workers, right? So, you know, by working at this laundromat, I can get my paycheck faster than I work somewhere else, right? Um, there, there are just a lot of, you know, a lot of systems that when you combine it with good technology and you build for your end user, as well as the person who you sell to that, that owner operator, it makes a huge difference in, in, in the business. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, this might be a good time to just kind of pause on the conversation. And I mean, can you tell us a little bit about Sense? And I mean, what, who are you guys? What are you guys doing? And what, what does that mean for, for me as a laundromat owner? Yeah. I mean, I, I basically said we do everything. So it's good to maybe fill, fill in the, fill in the blanks uh, to a certain extent. Yeah. I mean, Really, again, how I got in the business and how I got in the industry was 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 seeing that laundromat ownership was something that had massive opportunity day one when you buy the store. But how much kind of I think how much inefficiency exists in in the business and how many you know how many operators are we call it Frankensteining their business together by using a generic point of sale or no point of sale at all, paper logs, Excel spreadsheets, generic timekeeping. Um, and, and no way of reaching customers is, you know, they take all these, you know, bits and pieces of either generic or other industry specific tools to try to, you know, build some kind of scalable, um, uh, operation and, and really what we're focused on. And, you know, I, I fought with our marketing team in the very beginning when we were building our website, which is like, I don't want to put on our website that we're a point of sale because point of sale is a feature of what we do, but it's a, it, it's really the gateway to unlock more valuable uh, feature set for operators. So at a high level, how we look at our system is really what we call the Sense OS. It's an operating system. It's, it's a business in a box for an operator. An operator should you know buy their store, sign their lease, whatever it might be, get their equipment, be ready to open, buy their Sense system, and they're done. Whether it's single store ownership, multi-store ownership, 
everything from revenue reconciliation, CRM, delivery management, point of sale, employee management, shifts and tasks, dynamic pro- promo and coupon campaigns, you know, website and CMS, and the really, truly business in a box technology for an owner operator. But it starts there, right? That's our mission isn't just to build great software for business owners. It's, it's what it enables us to do is build a community and a network of operators and leverage that purchasing power, leverage that network and our position within the, the tech ecosystem of being one of the only truly venture backed businesses in the space and our connection and collaboration with other tech companies and, and, and other platforms that are introducing new operating models in so many other verticals. Why are restaurants the only ones, and, and actually now retailers, that are able to do gig economy uh, deliveries, mm-hmm. right? Why, why is that the case? Why, uh, in terms of the different uh, promos and coupon campaigns, why is the pizza pizza shops and, and pizza shop owners able to leverage integrations of, you know, order online with Google and, and order online with TripAdvisor, without actually doing any of the work of making that happen? Why, like, why are all these things possible in so many other industries and not ours, right? Well, because nobody's done it. Nobody's enabled that to happen for the owner operator. So our goal is to work with as many owner operators um, and, and store owners as we can, not because like that's the, the secret sauce of how we're gonna succeed as a business, But our fate as a company is directly intertwined with the fate of our operators. The more successful our laundromats are, the more successful we are, right? And so we want to find ways to deliver through good technology, through that infrastructure of the point of sale, the order management, the the most granular order tracking, the best customer experience through mobile ordering and and live link tracking and all of these uh, different products that we have. We want to leverage that technology to create new operating models and and enable business owners to try new things, to see how other industries are expanding and growing and other small business owners are enabling them to to launch more initiatives, generate more revenue without adding a GNA structure, without adding cost and CapEx, right? Grow the revenue and grow the margin. So look, I mean, that's a very high level view. I I can go deeper into the nuances of, online ordering and how the customer experience pairs with the, the order tracking in the store and how we aggregate orders and drive more revenue to stores through our partners and the residential space and direct to consumer. I can go into all that, but at a high level, I think what I would want to convey to the, to the folks watching this is if you own a laundromat, whether you're self-serve or full serve, and you want to know where you want to be able to see all of your data, you want to be able to, understand how all of your stores in different regions and districts maybe in towns are, are running. You want to be able to know how well your employees are doing, the return you're getting, how often they're working, their, their time, their time sheets, their time cards, the tasks, right? You want to know order 101, what washer went into at what time and on which cycle, right? All of that information exists within the sense OS and why we love working with our operators is, now let's find a way to take that data and put it to use and help you make good decisions with your business and, and build this kind of this network of operators. Yeah. A couple of things I really love about that is number one, very timely of you to come in with that message because we've been talking about that a lot here in the last few weeks on the podcast. So, uh, man, very timely on your part. Uh, number two, I love the concept of business in a box and you know, First of all, it's just got a good ring to it. So that's just solid marketing right there. But uh, but I like the concept behind it too. And I want to talk about that in a second. But I just had a question that popped up. This is kind of irrelevant compared to everything else we're talking about. But I'm just curious about this. What's your, you know, you you mentioned at one point, you're one of the only venture back companies in, in the industry, which I think is true. Um, what what's your pitch to these guys? I mean, what, why are they interested in investing in what you're doing in investing in this industry? Um, I mean, we talked a little bit about some of the things that are probably intriguing to them, but uh, I'm just, I'm just curious why, why are they investing now and, and why haven't they before? And, you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, let's, let's go back about five, six, 
oh my God, it's 2021 now, maybe seven years ago when, uh, you know, six, seven years ago when, when the Uber for X, any industry, Uber for laundry, Uber for retail, Uber for any, you know, anything, um, uh, became like the hottest thing in tech. So a bunch of companies raised a bunch of money, 35 million here, 12 million there, 9 million here, like top venture capital firms, top investors were flooding the market with capital for the Uber for laundry. And almost every single one of the businesses that started like six, seven years ago have all gone out of business. Yeah. There are very few, but for the most part, they've all gone out of business. So laundry you know, a lot of investors would look around and see the, the dead bodies. They'd see the, 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 the companies that have crashed and burned. And there was some thought of, you know, this is a real owner operator business. It's a, you know, fragmented industry. No laundry delivery company has ever really worked. And nobody's thought about it in a different way. I, I'll say that kind of to, to set the stage. A lot of our operators, even in the beginning, when we were building out a lot of the functionality that we have today, a lot of them signed on with us because it wasn't just what we had today. It was the way that our team thought about the industry, the way we think about product, our product roadmap, what we're really trying to create in this business, opposed to a point of sale product that we add features to. Or, uh, you know, a, a, just a, a, a software system that we're just trying to add little features here and there um, to make it a little bit better along the way. We have a fundamental different viewpoint on, on, on the opportunity in this industry. And it isn't just let's create a, a, you know, a good specific point of sale system with great features. Our vision is so much bigger. And, and, and you know, and the beauty of it is everything that we do what I tell investors, you know, about our business is we built sense to back the operator. That's everything that we did. All of our infrastructure goes back to believing that laundromat owners, whether it's a 80 store owner, a one store owner, a five, 10, whatever shape and size of the business, our system is built to help them manage, understand, and grow. As I, I said, I said in the beginning, like our fate is directly intertwined with the fate of our operators and frankly, when we raise this capital and raising another round now, um, you know, we didn't we didn't make a big splash. You know, of course, we could have gone to TechCrunch and all of the big the, the big news outlets. They would have loved to do an exclusive on this. Part of it is laundry is one of the best kept secrets in 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 any industry. A lot of people don't understand the great investment a laundromat is. That the headache it can be to run these stores, but the opportunity that exists in this industry. One of the largest retailers, you know, 80 or 100 stores in any other industry, it's, it'd be a pipsqueak, right? It'd be, it'd be a, one of the smaller retailers at 80 stores. You wouldn't even be out of one metro in some mm-hmm. cases. Um, and so I, I do think to a certain extent, nobody thought about the business the way that we're thinking about it. I give credit to our team. I mean, we, every single person on our team is just incredible. They're a difference maker. Um, and on purpose, we try not to make too much of a splash, right? We, we barely even put out content in the industry because we don't want to make too much noise. We, we have so much inbound, you know, stores reaching out to us to, to want to jump on board. We have invested, you know, some of our operators and, and customers invested uh, in, in the company because they believe in it so much. But I do think it is just one of the best kept secrets, um, you know, out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's really interesting. And it, it is kind of a kind of an interesting uh, trip through history to see kind of all the all the dead bodies, as you put it, that are littered the way. Um, but you know, like kind of like I mentioned earlier, like things have been changing, and there's new capabilities and new technologies that are that are coming to fruition here that have en- enabled a company like Sense or or someone else too who you know, to be able to be successful now, whereas in the past, maybe it just wasn't quite ready yet. Um, and, and maybe it does take thinking about things a little bit differently. Um, and you'll be able to kind of overcome the things that these other companies weren't able to overcome. That's, you know, there's, there's the whole first mover advantage, but it's only an advantage if you can figure out how to make it work. It's the second, third, fourth mover who, you know, 
can stand on the shoulders of the dead bodies, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and you well, know, I, I think you're the fence and see the path. I, I think you're exactly right. I mean, look, I mean, what is the famous Apple tagline, right? Was think different, right? That was the, that's the famous, the, the Apple tagline. But I think, uh, you know, there certainly is something about first mover advantage. Absolutely. But I think one of the big benefits that we've had and, and what now I think is this growing revolution in, in the industry is there are comps. Somebody chooses sense because they know another company. There, so th there is something about first mover advantage or they understand the concept, an investor, a, a, a laundromat owner, an attendant, a customer, because they've scanned the QR code at the restaurant, right? They've paid on Square. They've used a delivery. They used Uber Eats. They, there are comps across this industry and across other industries where you don't have to be a pioneer, right? You just mm -hmm. have to do it right and do it well. And execution when you're building any business, whether it's a tech startup worth billions of dollars or a local coffee shop or laundromat or dry cleaner, you have to get lucky. You have to have a good team. You have to have kind of the foundational aspects of getting lucky, really. Um, but the rest of it is just execution. Yep. If you build a good business, you do it the right way and you execute on your core mission uh, and the values that, that you that you have, you're going to find success. Now, the level of success is going to be based on some other variables of how lucky do you get? How who do you meet at the right time? You know, who did you bump into at that one dinner by accident um, that, that gets you further ahead than maybe you would have been otherwise? Um, but in any business, it's an execution business. Um, that, that's the key to success, frankly, in, in all things in life, I think, but especially when, when building a company. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I mean, one of the things that, you know, when we were talking before we jumped on this, this call um, in the past, uh, one of the things that really intrigued me is kind of your view or vision of this industry kind of going forward and what, you know, I, what the landscape is going to look like in this industry. Um, and I, th I think it probably ties back somewhat to that whole business in a box uh, concept that you, that you mentioned earlier, but can you, can you just kind of give us a picture of where do you see this industry moving, what it's going to look like, you know, down the pipeline in the future and, and, and maybe even how sense fits into all that. Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's interesting um, in, my, in my Sunday reading, right? Of course, uh, I, I look into the laundry industry in, in different countries and different regions. There's an incredible article um, from uh, Harvard Business School professors about the laundry industry in China, right? I think there was something like 400,000 laundromats, tiny, tiny, uh, you know, couple hundred square foot stores that all and massive processing centers outside of cities. And so the, it's, it's interesting to see the future of laundry how, and how it changes by region. But I, I think in the, in the U.S., I really do strongly believe in the owner-operator model um, because the way that laundromats are, are positioned, you know, I think the numbers are, was it 50% of laundromats are located in five states, right? California, New York, Florida, Texas, and Illinois. Right. And 87% or something of a laundromat's customer lives within a mile of their store. Over 45% of, of, of laundromats in the country are owned by multi store owners. And, you know, stores follow population. And so there are stores uniquely positioned within cities already, whether they're being built from the ground up or they're being retooled and, and sold and changed and with, with facelifts. There are these, these, call it like a node within a network. So whether it's a, a large direct to consumer business, whether you're looking at commercial, whether you're looking at residential route based uh, universities, hotels, hospitals, et cetera, is there a future where there's this massive processing center outside of every city and vans driving? There is, but, but really because of how the, the U S market of laundromats exists today, it makes so much more sense logistically it, it, on an efficiency and cost basis for the local operator to be a node within the network processing and uh, really powering laundry day in America. I, 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 again, I said this in the very beginning, I do believe that, that laundromats will be one of, if not the last retailer standing, 
is everything goes offline in central warehouses and either Amazon, Google, or Facebook or Apple does whatever that is. I really do believe that that laundromats will be one of the last standing retailers and the operating models, however, will have to change the operating model. Maybe just maybe the, the, the stores to, to really get to the same margin, the same investment return profile will have to do more than just over the counter need to break into delivery, right? Because to get in delivery, you want to get to the most efficient uh, uh, route based delivery. Right. Some some folks want drivers on the road as long as possible, going as far as they can to increase their total addressable market. Sometimes I tell operators, all right, that's true. Go drive 45 minutes out and get everybody you can. But look around you. Why don't you have every single one of the local customers doing either pickup and delivery? If they have washer and unit, why the hell are they wasting their time on doing that? Right. How can the you know, by, by working with local the cost can be democratized significantly, become more palatable for the customer, and the volumes can increase for the store. Um, and there are some, you know, I, I could talk for hours about the unique, you know, uh, unit economics of, of a store with a fixed amount of labor. And when you add in that new, new unit of labor, because your volumes increase, you've now increased your cost, and now you got to double the volume to get back to that same margin. So there are a lot of nuances, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I think what's so fascinating about this business is even when things go offline, the existing location of a store provides so much value when you think about a market network. Um, And when you think about how do you take residential and all these in commercial, um, you know, laundry day and drive that back to the owner operator. And, And when you talk about how does sense fit into that, that's where sense fits in. As laundry habits change of consumers, and they opt for more convenient services. We want to put our operators in the best position to capture those dollars and capture that volume while spending the least amount of money to get it. And the reason we started with that business in a box tech, right, is because they will then have the most structurally sound foundation of being able to handle that increase in volume to be able to have their business scale and grow. Sense is a platform that scales with you. You grow into, you grow, you, but you never grow out of, right? It's something that's going to stay with you as your business changes and grows. And I think that the term, your business is going to change is usually like, oh my God, what's going to happen? No, no, no. Your business is going to change because it's going to grow faster. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so that's kind of my thought on, on, on the landscape. I think it's just, the dominoes are going to fall. And even as, as you can tell, I talk about this for hours, I should probably shut up, but as, as more brands come into play, not the franchises and, and things like that, but as more direct to consumer brands, the, the entrepreneur that wants to create a business by picking up people's clothes, sure, they could send out, set up a warehouse outside of a city, but golly, it's a hell of a lot more efficient logistically to work with local operators. Right. And, and so again, part of how sense fits in is who knows what's going to happen. Distributors, manufacturers, opening up more stores, being able to leverage data, you know, who knows how that's, how that's going to, going to happen. And I think it's, it's the responsibility of tech companies like sense um, and look at slice with pizza or Odeco with coffee shops. How do we give the local operator? And I I can speak for the, the pizza company slice slice gives local pizza shop owners, the same powerful technology as a Domino's, right? And technology, Domino's is just as much as a technology and logistics company than a pizza company, mm-hmm. right? And, and so it's, it's, it, it's really giving the operators the ability to not just fight back against changes in the landscape of, of store ownership, but gives them the tools to win and to grow, you know, significantly. You, you mentioned, I'm just kind of curious of your thoughts on this and, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not expecting you to be an expert on this at all. So I'm just curious on your opinion on this, but you mentioned franchises. Where do you think those fit in, in kind of the landscape of things going forward? Do you think they're going to catch? Do you think they're not going, I mean, look, looking in the past, no franchises have really taken hold in the past, but there's, to my knowledge, I know of nine different 
franchises happening right now. So they're making another go at it and things are a little bit different. And some of the technology is there. Is that something that owner operators who are not a part of the franchise need to be worried about? Yeah. I mean, look, we, so I, I don't think it's a word. I mean, why, why does French, why does a franchise exist, right? They're taking a brand. That's a franchise. Franchise is, yes, it's a, it's a general operating, maybe an operating model and some technology, but the, the, the beauty of verticalized SaaS today and companies like Sense is you don't have to join a franchise to get access to the best tech, mm-hmm. right? That's no longer a need the way it used to. But you want to open a Subway franchise, you want to buy a McDonald's, you want to do that because they have a brand. The only time, again, I'll say these things as if I'm an authority on, on the topic. I'm not. Um, but, you speak uh, with that confidence. You just <laughs> say it. Mm, yes. <laughs> I, I, I do believe that the only time a franchise is really going to be relevant in this business is when a brand is relevant in this business. I agree. Um, I, I think that are, there are unique operating models around franchises. Some are franchising the over the counter or franchise just the self serve and keep and have two separate brands. I think there are, you know, and the goal of sense is we work with so many different kinds of businesses that we kind of open up our own a la carte menu of, how do you want to operate your store? No matter how you operate, you franchise the counter and you keep the self-serve, you franchise the self-serve and you keep the counter, whatever your business is, Sense is the underlying platform that makes it possible to track everything, to track your franchisee and how they're utilizing your, your machines or to track how much revenue is coming into your store and, and connecting a franchisee with a local operator. Um, so, but, but I really think that franchise and the hot button topic of a franchise is it's really just brand. And wh- why I don't think any franchise have, have really caught on in this industry is because laundry is one of the only retailers where laundromat a and laundromat B should have relatively simple end products. I mean, excuse me, relatively similar end products. I mean, if not, there could be a problem. Maybe somebody is good and somebody goes above and beyond. But at the end of the day, as long as you're not shrinking clothes, losing clothes, and the folding technique is solid, the the retention of a customer base should be pretty high because the cost basis is relatively similar in each metro. So I think that when it comes to pickup and delivery, brand is more relevant because that direct-to-consumer brand will spend more on their CAC, Mm -hmm. cost to acquire a customer, to get in front of the customer with that Instagram ad, with whatever it is. But like, am I going to walk an extra half mile or extra 10 blocks because there's a brand I'm familiar with compared to going to my local operator that's going to do just as well? It'll be interesting to see how consumer trends, consumer trends move. But I think really the zombie map to nice store will stunt the growth to a certain extent of franchise franchises. If operators really care, I mean, I'll give a shout out to one of our customers, Laundre, out in out in San Francisco. Ariana's a, a, a two store operator, and she's got one of the best brands I've seen. Not because she is trying to franchise it, but she cares about it. She cares about how her store looks. She cares about, you know, I remember talking to her about her her obsession with the specific tile that was going to be on her floor, right, and having. Um, uh, and, and having plants in her store gives some life and energy and, 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 and positive feeling when you walk in white walls, clean machine, you know, the basic things. Now I'm not going to say that you have to have a beautiful bathroom to be a, a top operator, which is something I, I I've heard, but I think if you just care to a certain extent on the appearance of your store and the customer experience, it does stunt the growth to a certain extent of the ability for somebody to be, to create an effective franchise because franchise a versus local operator B, the end product should be the same to again, to a certain extent. So I think it's more of a brand play than anything, but again, we, we work with different you know, uh, operators that run franchises. Um, and so our goal is just to back the operator and whatever business model works for them and helps them grow their business. That's really what, what, at least that sense we care about. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I think that's, I mean, you sound, you sound like an expert in there. So, I mean, <laughs> that's the danger. That's the danger. <laughs> a, a PSA. I'm not an expert. I just really, I love it and I'm passionate about it. Um, but you know, one man's opinion. 
Well, you know, I mean, it sounds very similar to how I've talked about it. So that I'm pretty sure that just makes you an expert. And makes I, mean, you correct. I agree with you. I'm an expert. 100%. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's how I like to see it. Uh, so, okay, cool. Well, uh, man, we've, we've gone through a bunch of stuff, but I want to talk about uh, new operators. Like what, you know, from, I guess, from a sense perspective, like, let's say you have somebody who's, who's coming in, who's coming on board. What do they need to know? How do they, how do they know if this is a right business model for them um, or platform for them to operate their business model with, or, you know, what, what do they need to do to prepare for it? What, can, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. You, do you mean about sense specifically or just like getting into the industry? Uh, well, let's talk first about somebody who wants to, you know, partner up with sense mm. and utilize your platform and, you know, to either, I guess, maybe just to start a pickup and delivery service and maybe a drop-off service. Um, somebody who wants a business in a box, you know what I'm talking about? You, you know, know I'm, I'm familiar with the phrase. Yeah. Love <laughs> using it. it sounds yeah. great on you. Um, yeah. I, I get you know, started I, with something like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, like we actually work. I mean, man, a lot of operators uh, that we work with whose stores don't open till July or August. And I think, you know, they're trying to get the tech. They want to, they want to check that box because they could be in permit purgatory or they're negotiating a lease or they're working with a distributor for a machine and trying to decide. So they want to, they want to get the software side handle, right? Which is a great opportunity for us because we get to get ahead of things. We get to show operators so many different models. And the beauty of sense is, you don't have to make a decision about your business and be stuck with it, right? You know, you make a decision on the machines you're going to use. Most likely it's going to be your machines in the next 10 years, right? right. Or, <laughs> but the, the, the beauty of good software should be, do you want to try leveraging the gig economy for your, for your uh, delivery services? And then when your volume picks up, think about leveraging a localized courier for route-based deliveries or buying your own vans if the economics speak for it. Try it right? Try to, we're trying to limit the, like the CapEx and the, the massive upfront investment an operator makes in some of the initiatives, whether it's a, maybe even a, a card system, a delivery system. It's a, like we're trying to make it a modular business. You want to try this operating model. You want to try commission for your team, for your employees. You want to try these dynamic promo and coupons. Do you want to try, you know, these various business models? till you figure out the one that's best for your business, the one that's best for you that you enjoy, that you feel passionate about running, and that works best for your, for your market, for your metro, for your area, and for your customers. So, you know, I'll, I'll say operators with sense, they get going in, in days, right? When they choose our system, they, you know, the only reason it takes days compared to immediately is because we really focus on having our operations team, our customer success team, meet with operators, go on zoom or, you know, now it's now we can almost go in person. And like, we've been dying to go in person to stores and meet with our operators, sit down with attendants, go through virtual trainings. Like that's the only time it actually takes. Cause we want to make sure that operators know we're in this with them, especially the new ones and, and, and the ones newer into the space. Um, but you know, my advice for, for new operators choosing sense or really choosing anybody, we feel confident that if you compare our system to anybody else, you'll come to a decision that that you're choosing sense. But at the core of it, if we're not the platform that's helping grow your business, you should go to the platform that's helping grow your business. That's again, we only care about backing the operator and uplifting this industry. We believe we're the ones that do it, but whoever it is, that's who we really care about. Um, and, and we want to make sure that 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 operators are supported in what they do. Um, I will warn, maybe warn is aggressive, but, oh, um, but uh, I'll, I'll warn operators. The warning Yeah, caution. I'll caution. I like caution more than warn. Hey, um, that feels I'll, a little nicer. Yeah. Like yellow light. You know, you could run it, but you know, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> We're in California. I, yeah, we run all the yellows. Yeah, you run all the yellows. And a little lights. bit of the red too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll say that a lot of providers in this space, you know, or I'll say a lot of operators have been billed the same, you know, the same bill of goods have been told, sold the same bill of goods for a long time. And there've been, there, there's been language that's used in the space that 
you know, your over the counter has to be separate than your self serve. Your self serve is different. Your delivery is different. Your this is a, they're the operating model and the technology in the space has been largely the same for, for many, many, many years. And I, I, what I caution and, uh, and advise new operators is be a sponge, look at other industries, look at companies powering other verticals, look at the opportunity that's in space, in the space, talk to as many companies as you can. Don't just talk to one and be sold, which you think is doing a disservice to sense. I mean, if you talk to us, why would I want you to talk to anybody else? But I'm telling you, you will see the difference when you talk to different companies and you learn uh, about how they're selling you and what they're telling you is possible either on a technology or operating basis. Because my painting with a broad brush overarching statement is whatever people are telling you is possible, there's more. There's more you can do. There's more opportunity. Um, Again, as you could say, I'm, I'm not biased covering up my logo. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I do believe that sense is the one that will give you that best opportunity to grow your business, but just be a sponge, talk to different people, talk to operators, connect with mutual customers and, and talk to different systems. So you understand what is the best for not just you and your business, but how you want to run your business, how you want to operate your business the level of involvement you want to have, what kind of employees you want to have and what kind of customer experience you want to have. So yeah. that's, that's, that, that would be my spiel. Well, I mean, that's just, that's coming straight out of confidence right there. Hey, go talk to my competitors and we'll see you back here. Real Look, soon, I mean, right? if you want, if you want another dose of confidence, I don't really think, I don't really don't, think don't we cross have... the line to hubris though. I've heard that. I know that's trouble. True. So that's stay true. confident. I mean, just don't well, cross the line. We got to, I, I promise I'm not going to fly too close to the sun okay. <laughs> uh, here, I, but, but I think, you know, and people ask us like, who are your competitors? There are obvious competitors to sense. Don't get me wrong. Right. The, the clear, we have competition that way, but you know, the way I think about it, I don't think we have in, in some ways, and this is for better or for worse. It's not sense is better because of X, Y, and Z. I don't really, in, in some ways, I think we don't have some competition in some way, not because we're so much better or or so much worse because we just go about it differently. Different doesn't always mean better, but we go about it differently. And so again, I, that's why I say, talk to people. Don't just look at their product. Don't just take a demo. Talk to the people running this business because the one thing I've learned about this industry, it's a people business. It's, it's, a, it's, it's all about being committed to this industry, understanding it, being a part of the community and caring to an obsessive psychotic level. Um, if I'm going to be powering operators, if not me, but if sense is going to be building software that is somewhat foundational for a business, you need to be obsessed with it. You need to love every aspect of the, you know, tracking the weights of an order and making sure that we can track the Delta and send the alerts when, when something is, you know, when there's five or seven pound difference of the pre-processing and post-processing weight, like, yeah, talk to the people that are running the companies that are, that are building the software because it's a people business and you don't want to, after you sign, just have to deal with a chat bot. You want to know that you're being taken care of and you want to know that people are in this with, you know, people are in this with you for the long haul, because that's, that's what this industry needs. It needs people believing in the future vision of it and not, uh, you know, not people either trying to make a a quick buck or, or, or or trying to go too broad or, or generic. Awesome. 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 Uh, I have a question for you fully recognizing the answer to this question may just be, laundromat owners and dry cleaner owners. But I'm just curious, uh, do you, cause we're already in a, like a pretty niche down niche here or niche <laughs> for those of you who prefer niche. Um, is it, is there an ideal person for sense or is the answer if you own a laundromat or you own a dry cleaner or you own both senses for you, or do you have an ideal within that niche? You know, I, I thought when we first started the business that we would, you know, I thought in the very beginning, single store operator, you know, people looking, they have their business and they want to take it to the next level. 
then I thought, oh my God, we're, we're perfect for the, the multi-store operator, right? We work with an 80 store operator, we work with a 25 store operator, we work with one, three, five. And what I realized is the pain points of a single, single store operator, whether they have, you know, 35 machines or a multi-store, 80 store, 20 store, five, 10, seven store operator with 50 machines per store, 100, 200, 300, a lot of the pain points are very similar, right? Now they, they're multiplied, I have the bigger the business and maybe you have mm-hmm. to deal with the GNA structure and more labor and more machines can go down and you have routes. And the, but, but by and large, there are a lot of similar problems, which is what makes the community so great. And it was, Jordan, it was what, what makes you so great is you can paint with broad strokes of, of, of the pain points and what operators can do better because the, the pain points and the successes are shared no matter the size of the business. So again, there are nuances, right? We built crazy functionality and hub and spoke and regions district, like crazy mega multi-store owner system. But then we build functionality that, you know, by and large supports all of our operators. And so we take all of our product feedback by talking to as many operators as we can. The commitment we ask of our customers when they sign is, we get on the phone with us every once in a while. I mean, we talk to you once a week if you'd let us, but let us know what you're experiencing so we can compare it to, 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 to the pain points we hear from other operators and build the right product. I don't want to build the product that we think is right. I want to build a product that Jordan, you think is right. And, 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 and your listeners. So I thought we'd have long, the theme of this is long answer to a, to, to, to a short question, but uh, I thought we'd have a, a specific operator that we would really succeed in, succeed with. But by and large, everybody experiences a similar problem. Everybody experiences similar ways that they're succeeding. Um, and, and, and we found success really with, with any laundromat or dry cleaner or garment care professional. You know, you know, somebody's building a company to direct to consumer brand. Somebody's doing the over the counter sale, the over the counter business for a laundromat owner, and you leverage our system or residential. It's all. It, it really all um, all fun. You know, falls into our our sweet spot. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, that's. I, I wanted to ask that question because I think there's going to be a lot of people who are like, "Well, how do I know if it's for me?" And so just to make a short answer to your long answer is if you own a laundromat dry cleaner or garment care uh, business, it's, it's for you. Is that, am I saying that? Uh, Exactly. This is, you're keeping me honest. I need to make sure I shut up a little bit, but yes, that is, (laughs) that is exactly (laughs) correct. If you own a garment care business, laundromat dry cleaner senses for you. Got it. I'm only giving you a hard time because people are always like, dude, you are so long winded and slow talking. And uh, I'm just glad that I'm not the only one. That's all. Oh, I'm worse. Garrett, yeah. Yeah, I'm worse. <laughs> but at least I, you have this like passion behind everything you're saying, right? Like mm, I'm like really just like sucked in with your passion and energy. So uh, I got, I got to give something to be entertained when I talk for 45 minutes about weight changes of a laundromat product. So. <laughs> and I've been, I've been blown away by the response to how many people listen to this podcast and how many people reach out. I'm like, dude, this is a laundromat podcast. All right, let's just calm it down a little bit and yes. go do something productive with your life. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I get psyched about it too. And apparently we're not the only ones, man. There's a lot of us out there. We're not the only crazies in the world. That's this right. Is good to know. This yeah, is we good need, to know. you know what? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make t-shirts that say laundromat psychopath. And, oh, oh my God, please. I got to yeah. get the whole team, the whole team. <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, yeah, we're going to, we're just going to get them out there for everybody. I love that. I'm pre-ordering. Uh, you mentioned earlier about how great I was. Can we talk about that a little bit more? And oh, <laughs> totally I, I, I mean, how much, how much time do you have? <laughs> I feel, I feel bad you're asking this question last. No, or, we're going to do, I mean, we're going to do a full episode on that. So. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, hey man, th- I mean, this has been awesome. I want to give you an opportunity if there's anything else that you want to, to chat about. I mean, obviously we, you know, you and me, we're on the same wavelength. We could talk forever about this and, and would talk forever about this, but I want to make sure there's nothing like super important that you want to make sure that you communicate to people. Um, and then I also want to give people an opportunity to, to find out how to get a hold of you, find out more about sense, all that at the end. But is there anything that you want to make sure that people want to, that people need to hear um, before, before we wrap this up? 
Yeah, I mean, a couple things, and I'll, I'll try to be brief. The first thing is, I'm not holding my breath. Oh, yeah, do not hold your breath. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The, the the first thing is buy, listen, watch, respond, engage with all things Jordan Berry and laundromat <laughs> resource because it's been no. In all seriousness, I've so thoroughly enjoyed all of our conversations and appreciate your passion and insight and and. Again, I think this is such an underserved industry for technology, but also in in unbiased, you know, and people that care about giving information and insights to operators to make their businesses better and drive value for the industry. So to everybody who still made it at this point of, of the podcast, <laughs> continue to engage in all things Jordan Berry, whether it's me talking or whoever else, um, or, or, or even better, just Jordan, uh, continue <laughs> to engage. You know, and it's just, you know, I could say just an amazing experience and so grateful to have to, to have me on. The last thing is, you know, we our mission is just to, to drive value for operators, to increase the revenue, drive the efficiency and really be a facilitator of outsourcing laundry day in America to the local laundromat and dry cleaner. That is the core of everything that we do. So if you're a laundromat owner who has a system, who doesn't have a system, who hates technology or is obsessed with technology, take a call with us, learn more about what we're doing. Let us chew your ear off. I promise you won't have to deal with me. So the phone call won't be two and a half hours. You'll deal with people <laughs> more specialized uh, and more succinct, but you know, just, just, please would love to connect with you and, and tell you about why we're continue to tell you about why we're passionate about the industry, show you our product, tell you everything that we can about, uh, about how we feel like we're approaching this business differently and just be a sponge because this is such an amazing time to be a laundromat and dry cleaning, you know, business owner. Um, you know, the industry is really, it, it's, it's just, take off and the opportunity for efficiency and revenue generation across all the different sides of this vertical are, are ready to be, to be, to be snatched up by, by the local business. And we hope that we can be a driver for that, you know, of that for you, but talk to as many people as you can in this industry. And it's just an incredible, incredible time. So, um, that's to be, out of respect for everybody, I'll leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I think that's, that's really good. And, uh, I mean, so, okay. So, I mean, you tell people to get a hold of you, what's the best way for people to a find out more information about sense and B to get a hold of someone at sense to hear more and, and to kind of connect. I mean, you mentioned multiple times throughout the podcast, Hey, talk to the people involved in the company this is a people business. So how do they do that? Yeah. I mean, you go to our website, trysense.com. Again, everything we're trying to do is just try it, right? So trysense.com, T-R-Y-C-E-N-T-S.com. If you go book a demo from there, it'll immediately take you to the calendar of any of our sales team and onboarding specialists and demo specialists who can give you a walkthrough of you know every side of the business, spend as much time with you as you'd like. Um, and you could do it right from there. You don't have to wait for an email on this. Just book a time with us um, on our website, um, you can email me, alex at trisense.com. I'll make sure you get taken good care of no matter what. I'm sure we'll be, be connecting, I, I hope. But anything at trisense.com, go to our website, talk to operators that, that work with us. Um, and, you know, we, we love, to, love to connect. And, and hopefully I'll reach you guys again if uh, Jordan lets me on again. Oh said, yeah, absolutely. No promises. no promises. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it depends on how much you want to pay me for that. So, uh, just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just this so is unpaid. No, yeah. Nobody ever pays me to come on the podcast and nobody ever will. So, uh, but seriously, man, this has been incredible. Make sure that you check out trysense.com and Hey, give them a try, go book a call and, and talk with, you know, the people over there at sense and get a sense for sense. That should be like a motto. How about like that? Another, Dude, can another I another clothing? Can we put that on the back of the T-shirt. Yeah, like laundry laundromat psycho psychopath. Yeah, okay. and then on the yeah, I like that. You know, get a sense for sense. I like that, man. This is we're just marketing your company 
you know, we're just rebranding everything right That's now. That's it. I, I'm happy to come on anytime. These are great ideas. This is amazing. Yeah, this is amazing. You're getting a lot out of this for free, man. This is great. Uh, no, but seriously, go check out trisense.com. The link to it and uh, in Alex's email are going to be in the show notes. And also, if you're on YouTube, they'll be down below in the description. So, you know, click through there if you need to, or you can just type it in on your browser, but make sure you check it out. A lot of cool things going on. Another thing that I want to mention uh, before we jump off here, um, if you have been, you know, feeling this energy that Alex has and you want to hear more about the future of this industry and how you can be a part of the future of this industry, we actually put together a, uh, a webinar that, um, that we're going to host through Laundromat Resource, but Alex and his team are going to put it on. Um, that's going to be July 1st. You'll be able to sign up at laundromatresource.com slash events. Um, and, uh, I'll put a link again in the show notes and in the description. So that's July 1st, uh, for a webinar. And we're going to be talking about the future of, of the industry and how you can be a part of that. And then there'll be some time for some Q and a, so you can ask questions, you know, about the future. You know, I think you're going to bring your crystal ball, right? I think I will. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll dust it off. Have it yeah. quite some time. Right. Uh, but excited <laughs> to dust it off for the webinar. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Polish it up. Uh, but, but also you'll, you'll be able to ask questions about sense and get a sense for sense uh, at that webinar there. So check it out. Laundromatresource.com slash events, sign up for that, uh, for that webinar. And uh, man, we'll, we'll be super excited to, to join you over there and hear some more from you, not only just this incredible energy that you bring, but also, you know, the wisdom and the experience of, uh, you know, from all these different owners and operators in the different business models that you're seeing and how you're seeing them work and operate and what direction you're seeing them go. And I think that's super valuable. Um, so I'm super excited about it and I know it won't just be you and me, but even if it was incredible, I have a great time. I'd be excited. I'd be excited. So thank you again for coming on. Really appreciate it. We'll definitely have you back on free of charge and uh, we'll get an update, you know, from you on how sense is going, how everything, you know, is, is progressing along and uh, here's some more of your wisdom and feed off some of that energy. There's a lot of people actually, I know now I'm going long, but there's a lot of people who tell me that they listen while they're, you know, working out or while they're, you know, riding their bikes or on jogs and stuff like that. So I, I just, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of PRs after this episode because they're just going to be like energized. I, I'm by just trying ears. to fire people up, you know, get that last rep. So yeah. Set That's, the PR. Yeah. You know, burn in that last mile. Yeah, I'm going sub five minute mile uh, <laughs> yes. while I listen to this one. It's going to be great. Uh, well, all right, man. Thank you again. Appreciate you coming on everything you. that you shared and can't wait to uh, join you at the webinar and everybody else joining us at the webinar. And uh, we'll see you then. Awesome. Thank you, Jordan. All right. I know, no, no, that you got a ton of value out of that episode. It was an incredible interview. I know I got a lot out of it and just felt very inspired by Alex. It was very, very cool. So make sure you check out Sense and check out what they are doing. Again, links to Sense and to everything we talked about in this episode will be on the show notes, laundromatresource.com slash show 59. Or if you're on YouTube, they'll be down in the description as well. And as you know, every single week, I encourage you pick one one thing from this podcast episode that you can put into practice. Pick one thing and actually do it, right? Because it's doing that gets you where you want to go. It's not just learning, right? You've learned. Now pick something to do. Action paves the way to success, right? Okay, so for me, this episode, I wrote down that, well, first of all, I got to share my favorite quote of the whole interview, which was laundromats are the cockroach of retail. You can't kill it. Love that, by the way. It's really funny and kind of fitting. Uh, but the other thing that he said is, um, uh, whatever people are telling you is possible, there's more. Whatever people are telling you is possible, there's more. And for me, I know that's not like a practical, okay, go do this. But I think for me, it's a mindset shift in thinking about my business bigger, right? And I think laundromat industry can get, you can get like very... I think it's very easy to get in your box and think, okay, here's what the business is. 
And I think sometimes we forget to stop and think, okay, do we want this to, to be bigger? Can we do more with it? Can we help more people with it? Can we build a better business with it? Right? And so I'm telling you that there is a possibility for you to find financial freedom in this industry. And Alex says that even though I'm telling you that, there's even more possible for you, right? So, hey man, for me, I think it's opening up my mind and seeing, okay, what more is out there for me with laundromats? What is it for you? I'd love to hear about it. Head over to the forums, laundromatresource.com slash forums, share your one takeaway. What are you putting into action this week based off of this episode? All right, guys, this has been incredible. As always, we'll see you again next week on the Laundromat Resource Podcast. Peace.